Hi, everyone, and thanks for joining in. In this episode, I'd like to touch upon the devilish problem of jagged edges in components, on the vertical edges of components, and how to get rid of them. I'm going to start with a simple session of Aspire, but in this case, I'm going to use standard modeling resolution for any new components that I create. I would like to start with a texture. So I go to the clip art folder and find a texture that I find attractive. I choose the bark texture. I need to resize it down to about 11 and a half inches. By the way, these 3D models are of exceptionally high quality and typically don't cause any problems with jagged edges. It's when you create your own new component where the problems show up. I would like to increase the Z height, the shape height of this component within the properties to about a quarter of an inch to give it some real depth and dimension. That's the kind of texture that I like. To this, I'm going to add some letters. Click on the text icon. I'm going to choose S as the letter of choice. I'm going to create two S's, one to show you the before effect and one to show you the after effect. The font is Times New Roman, nothing special. I'm going to create components from these new vectors. And that new component for the letters will have a half inch base height. So we have some nice vertical edges. Click apply and preview and it looks okay. As we zoom in though, we can start to see some ridges on the bottom of the S. I don't know if this will show up in the toolpath preview or in the finished product. So let's create some toolpaths to investigate some more. Go to the toolpath side and create a finished toolpath of the entire model. Eighth inch ball nose. Calculate and preview. As we zoom in, we can see that the sides of the S's are a bit deformed. Not what I expected. Is there anything that can be done with this? Yes. Here's one approach. If you choose the original vectors that you use to create the components for the letters, and at this point, I draw a small circle to represent the size of the bit so I can see where to place it. And zoom in to the edge of the component S. You can see the pixelation. I position the bit where I want it to cut. I then need to measure from the original vector to the center of that bit so that I can create an offset vector. In this case, it would be 0.038 inch. I select the first vector, offset it outwards, and I have that new vector, which I then also offset by that same amount. So now I have two new vectors. I select those two new vectors, and I want to create a new finished toolpath. But first, I need to hide the component that created the letter S. I want to trick the software into believing that it's not there. I create a second finished toolpath, but it will only fit within those two new vectors. I preview the original finished toolpath and zoom in, and it still is as bad as we saw.
But now I'm going to preview the new finished toolpath that I just created. I think it did a rather good job of cleaning up the edges. This technique is one of my favorite, though there are several other ways of approaching this problem. I hope you liked the video and learned something new to add to your bag of tricks. We'll be back next week with another episode in our series. Hope you can subscribe to our video channel and we'll see you then. Enjoy.